Poor Lamenta. All alone. You were a practice miniature back in the day, and you don't really fit into the rest of my Lamenta's army. And I didn't even paint your base. Maybe I can find some other 90s models to keep you company. If only I had an excuse to paint up some more retro minis. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Miniscape. If you've not been here before, then welcome. I usually paint something, add a pinch of law, include a slice of rules if applicable, and season it all with my own thoughts. A hobby tapas, if you will. So, it hadn't escaped me that many people have been painting 90s miniatures, specifically the Monopose Space Marines which you may know from my other video about them, or possibly from the 2nd edition 40k starter set amongst other places. I painted a squad of these for my Ultramarines army a few months ago, but with all the hype of the hashtag 90s Marine Challenge, I'm going to jump on this rapidly propagating bandwagon again and paint some more. Anyway, I begin this process with trepidation for a number of reasons. Firstly, if you search for 90s Marine Challenge on Instagram, you will see that the Darren, sorry, the bar is set already very high, and while I might be able to emulate something like that with enough time and effort, I just don't want to. I have quotas to meet. Secondly, while there are many Space Marine chapters, many people will paint theirs as well-known armies, and I want to try something a bit different. Not that it matters too much. I mean, who cares if my little plastic man is painted with the same paint scheme as somebody else's? Anyway, after weeks of ruminations, I decided one monopose marine would not cut it. Neither would two or three, so I settled on four. As I have said in prior videos, I am intrigued by the Badab War era, which is why I collected Lamentas for a time, so using that as a theme seemed a good way to go. I spent a while reviewing the chapters available to decide which to paint. Clearly the Astral Claws, being the antagonist of that story, was a must, but I noticed their chapter symbol was somewhat more elaborate than most. I didn't want to buy a set of new custom transfers or print my own, so I either had to find something similar in my collection of transfers, or just freehand it. Initially I chose a few chapters with simple symbols. The Nova Marines made it onto my list for this reason. That and their quartered scheme looks rad as hell. But none of the other options were scratching my itch. The Astral Claws and Lamenters were Maelstrom Warders, so it made sense to complete the set with the Charnel Guard and Mantis Warriors. Even if the latter had one hell of a symbol to paint. Nevertheless, I like a challenge, so the Maelstrom Warders it was. But Nova Marines, man! Okay, I decided to paint one of those two as a sort of bonus prize. The Lamenter was already done, so I started with the Astral Claw. This guy was not a Monopose Marine, but one from the Warriors of the Imperium Box of Six, like the Ultramarines that I covered during my first video. I hadn't painted a Marine before with such a metallic heavy scheme, so this was new territory for me. Over a black prime, I used a base coat of gunmetal from Army Painter. Highlighting that with the strangest named paint I own, Violator Metal. Anyway, it's brighter than the gun metal, so it worked well for the highlights. I used black to line in the recesses and then focused on the other colours, which are gold and blue. The blue was Macrag blue, double highlighted by simply mixing the Macrag blue with different amounts of white. For the gold, I always start with a brown. In this case, the old Citadel Vermin Brown, before layering on the gold. I used Dwarven Gold by Metal and Alchemy since it has a wonderful luster not realised by any of the Citadel paints, in my opinion. When that was dry, I shaded the gold with Reichland Flesh Shade, and then went over the raised areas again with Dwarven Gold. The bulk gun was black, and my preference is to paint the edges a dark blue first, and then highlight sharply with a light grey. The eyes and the gem were also blue, painted like the shoulder pad. The finishing touches were the transfers and the free-handed tiger, which I practiced first on pencil and paper. This was a fairly straightforward scheme. I reckon I could knock out an army of these in no time, but I already have four Space Marine armies, so... Do I really need another? The 
rest of the models were monopost sculpts. Some of these were in shocking condition when I found them. The tabs were snapped for one, so I cut those off and glued them to a plastic shot glass for a painting handle. The other parts were attached to a paper clip and then a core. Painting them this way seemed the best way to catch all the details, even though some of them would be obscured later. The second dude was the Mantis Warrior. I should have probably used a black prime for this guy since the first coat of green looked like it had been done by three year old me, but it turned out fine in the end. I chose a dark green for the base, which would also hang around in the recesses to provide shading, or that was the plan anyway. The green I chose was a German field grey. Now here's the thing, if you've never done it before, go onto a forum focusing on World War II war games and ask them what colour you should paint the German uniforms. Thank me later. I mixed the field grey with army painter goblin green and used this for the second coat. It started to look a bit better but still had a look of snot about it, so I tried layering on just goblin green and that seemed fine to me. I painted the shoulder pads Avalanche Sunset which is my favourite yellow ever. The lower section of the helmet and the chest plate got the same treatment. It was at this point I was glad I chose to paint these models unassembled, but most of the detail would later be hidden by the bolt gun. But it didn't matter. I knew it was painted well, and therefore I could sleep at night. Now the shading needed some attention. The dark green I put on before hadn't worked, so I decided instead to line in the recesses with vermin brown for the sake of contrast. The bolt gun was basically the same as for the astral claws. The gem got painted red, and the helmet skull, well, that got painted skull looking. The pistol holder and knife sheath, try saying that 20 times, got the black look. I usually paint these black or brown, but I felt there was already plenty of brown on the Mantis Warrior anyway. Now I didn't know much about this chapter before the project, and truth be told, I still don't. But a friend did show me this rad artwork of Tiberios the Red Wake being an absolute gentleman to this poor armless Mantis Warrior, and only fighting with one of his claws. <laughs> and some people say everyone in the 40k universe is bad. Anyway, I had to go at freehand in the symbol on the shoulder pad, and oh boy, that was a challenge. I'll confess, it looks like a mantis has been through the mangle, and even then I'm being generous to myself. But I think it's all I can do for now. Maybe later I'll go back and try again. Or maybe not. And on that note, I look forward to you all telling me in the comments to buy transfers, or paint it differently, or buy a 3D printed shoulder pad. Thanks in advance. So, that was the Mantis Warrior. Next is the Charnel Guard. Paint schemes for this were hard to find at first. There doesn't seem to be much official, just fan material, but what is present is generally consistent, so that was fine. Over a black prime, I painted a base coat of a 50-50 mix of Cantor blue and black. I've painted a few Death Company in my time, and if that taught me anything about painting a model black, it's not to paint it black. Well, not to paint it black exactly, but painted a very dark blue or grey. Edge highlights on this were two greys, a thicker dark grey followed by a sharper lighter grey. For the shoulder pads and knee I used burnt cadmium red, followed by a layer of that mixed with mephiston red, and then just mephiston red. I did the same on the bolt gun. When I highlight red, I tend to mix some orange with white or orange with pale sand, or well, to be honest, I change my mind every time I paint red, so once I highlighted a red model with bronze flesh and that looked fine. Now for the symbol here, I chose to use an existing transfer. Apparently, this is the Indomitus campaign badge, but it seemed close enough to use on the shoulder pad for the Charnel Guard. Nevertheless, I added a few curls with black paint to make it look closer to the actual Charnel Guard symbol. That symbol had a white skull in the middle, and maybe I will return to correct this at a later date. Interestingly, the Charnel Guard are a Blood Angel successor chapter, just like the Lamenters. So two out of the four of these were Blood Angel successors. Very interesting. Anyway, with the Lamenter already done, all that was left was to base these guys. But let's have a break from the Maelstrom Warders and discuss one of their opponents in the Badab War, the Nova Marines. People seem to lose it about the difficulty of painting quartered schemes, but honestly, I thought it was okay. Over a white prime, 
I painted McCrag blue, taking care to get the quarters the right way around. The opposing quarters got a coat of dark sand. There are various examples of schemes online, some painting blue with white, and some painting blue with a slightly off-white. I preferred the latter. The blue sections got a recessed shade of black, while I used Reichland flesh shade on the sandy areas. I then used various layers of a mixture of pale sand and white to give the colour you see here. Finally, the highlight on these quarters was just white. Like with the Astral Claws, I highlighted the blue by simply adding different amounts of white to the McCrag blue. I used red on the bolter, which I know will upset some people, but I like the look of it and it's my miniature, so please, don't worry about it. The symbol on the shoulder pad was achieved using an iron halo transfer plus a white skull. This was definitely the easiest of the miniatures in the collection. The Nova Marine got the classic goblin green base because he is special. The Maelstrom Warders deserved something else. Since the Badab War is known for ship to ship battles, I felt a 90s style goblin green base was not appropriate, even though GW seemed to think it was fine to put them on the dwellers of the Underhive for Necromunda back in 1995. So my solution was to craft some industrial starship deck plate style bases using thin card, a biro for the indents, cable ties, and bits of paperclip. The prime was black and then dry brushed with gun metal and VIOLATOR metal. I added browns for the weathering, and when that was dry, I painted on Incubi Darkness, highlighted with Lothan Blue at the edges. Finally, I painted the cables red. Since I only used a small amount of super glue to attach the marines to their shot glass base, snapping them off was easy and made a very satisfying noise. Each of the Maelstrom Warders were glued to their base and the job was finished. Or was it? Typically, I build miniatures for gaming rather than display, even though, with all my good intentions, I do paint tenfold more than I play. But unless I'm going to paint four more armies or kill teams, these guys will never see time on the tabletop. So, to make them look the part on my shelf, I think they need a suitable display. Now I don't own a 3D printer, so all I had was my phone core, my cardboard, and my creativity. I had an idea for a display stand in my head, and although I tend to do all my planning in my brain rather than on paper, I decided it would expedite the project to devise some blueprint. So I knocked together a quick template using Publisher, printed it, trimmed the parts with my craft knife, and glued them to 5mm foam core, save for one which I stuck to cardboard. The idea was to create a series of arches that would be the windows of a starship, and then have some kind of space scene in the background. After trimming the parts with a craft knife, I stuck them together with hot glue and covered the whole thing in Mod Podge. Later, I sprinkled on some fine sand for texture and sealed it with dilute PVA. I used a grey-blue spray paint for the base coat, followed by a light dusting of grey and then white. I dry brushed all the edges white to give some definition, and finally I painted the well black. One issue I found later was that the imprint was too small to fit a 25mm base into it, so I had to do some correcting later. The final part was the backdrop. I took some black card and marked on where the windows would be. In those gaps, I painted a planet and an Imperial battleship followed by a starfield. And there we have it. Four Maelstrom Warders using 90s retro plastic space marines. The Lamenter and his three friends. And don't forget the Nova Marine. This has been a fun little project and a welcome distraction from painting ultramarines. But don't worry, I have plenty of those left to do. Probably enough to keep me going for the next year at least. If you like what I do, please have a look at my Instagram page as well. And with that, I had better go paint some more minis. Take care, and thanks for watching.